that was really um, Alice the Encounter. I have to say it was amazing how they actually were able to handle all that costume under such strong wind. I mean, it's really blowing everywhere. So um, under such condition, it's really um, it's really fun to see them all. I mean, I really think they did a great job just um, trying to handle that. So yeah, kudos to them. Um, so hopefully one day you guys will get to actually see Brio County's opera in like a proper theater state. But right now, today, we will. It's actually very nice. Um, you, um, I would like to introduce actually the poem that the poet, um, the scholar Li Yi, he wrote, actually talks about bamboo, talks about um, opening the screen, uh, opening the curtain um, by the window when the wind blows through the bamboo. So it actually, so we have the perfect setting for that scene. Um, so, you have a taste of Cantonese opera. It's definitely different from Western opera. What's the difference between Cantonese opera and Western opera. So actually, we don't have, um, so Western opera, they re rewrite the music every time they, comp they compose new music for each opera. But for Cantonese opera, or Chinese opera, um, most of the Chinese opera, we actually reuse tunes for different plays. So you actually hear the same, similar tunes, but it's being, the lines of the librettos are written completely new for the story. And so there's this kind of like recycle of, of the tunes, but it's not, you wouldn't hear something completely the same, because actually there's some flexibility on how it's, the tune is interpreted. So the singer actually has some kind of flexibility, and it can be improvised actually on stage at the moment. So even if it's the same opera, it could sound different with the same person. Because sometimes the, the singer, I mean the performer could feel, oh, I want to sing this way tonight, and then you can actually sing to a slightly different than next play. Within certain rules, so we do have rules that we have to learn, but within that structure, there are flexibility, which is very interesting. So how do you, um, how, does, how, how does it work with the musicians? So here, I'm going to introduce you to the musicians. So basically, here we have, tonight we have a very small ensemble, just three. We have the Erhu, which is a two-string folk instrument. I have to, I have to, I have to um, give a little story. She is my singing teacher. I was trained by her over 15 years ago before I did music. because of that flexibility that they can, the performer can change like on stage at the moment. So there are some, um, th so they have to like really capture, they have to be so focused on what uh, what the performers are doing so that they can follow. So they don't really, um, the music are not played exactly at the same time as they sing. So it's like the singer sing and then the music follows. So that's very different from Western opera. It wouldn't happen because we have, in Western opera there's a director, and then they just direct you know the orchestra and the and the performer. The director looks at the performer and the directs the orchestra. But here, but in Chinese opera, in Cantonese opera, um, 
the herbal player is the lead musician, and the percussionist, who's the lead, uh, who also actually is almost like the director, serves almost like the director for the Cantonese opera, because he's responsible for the rhythm, how fast it should sing, how slow, you know, the rhythm of the show. So he actually, um, so the percussionist, the, the performers, and the herbal, the lead um, musician, the herbal player, the three of them actually needs to be very well connected, um, and they also need to rehearse a lot or get to know each other, you know, be very familiar with each other so that they kind of know and get get the gist of how, you know, how fast and how slow the whole flow should go. Um, so it's, very, it, it's a very interesting mechanism that happens um, on stage. So if, so if you try to like block them and put them turn away from the, the performance, it doesn't work. It, they would be like, I, I can't, you know, they can't play um, as well, I guess, because um, they really need to look at the performers. So next, next part is going to be the second act of the story. We just saw them, they met. They met through, I don't know if you know this because um, there are a lot going on. I knew there was a lot going on. So they met through a hairpin because she dropped the hairpin while roaming the streets and looking at the lanterns and then he picked it up. And she came back and started looking for it and he was kind of like playing with her and said, oh, well, is it over there? Maybe it's over here? Ah, I have it here. So you can kind of see that um, playing thing. So then actually, then, I mean, she was so happy to have met him, um, and then immediately they fell in love and they got married that night. So <laughs> yes, yes, it's it's look, they're very open back then. I no. So it's it's kind of like a one night stand, if you call it that way. Um, so after they're married, I mean, it's it's really romantic. They, you know, she fell in love. I mean, she fell in love with this poem. She met this. The poet, uh, you know, in person, and then immediately he fell in love with her, and then so she's like, "Oh my God, I married him! I think I I get to marry him." So, but but the next day, there's bad news. He became the champion scholar because he went to the capital for a civil exam. So he became the champion scholar, and he was immediately once he was appointed the champion scholar, he was immediately sent away by the emperor to the border. And so they had to part. And the next scene, the next act is about them parting. So think about the departure of hope and anxiety because Xiaoyu just met him. They had a one night stand. And now he's leaving with all these, you know, with a title. He's going to be like a, a, court, you know, a court official. And he doesn't know when he's coming back. So he's being sent to the border, it's dangerous, and then there are all these unknown factors. She, he might fall in love with someone else, you know, or he might forget about her. So she's, she's happy that he's the champion scholar, but she's also very anxious about him leaving her for an unknown period of time. So we'll, the next act will be um, performed in singing style, and um, so let's see how the music can tell you about So um, the next uh, the singer, um, we have Mimi and Jun Jun. Yes, and Jun Jun will sing the scholar part, and Mimi will sing the courtesan Xiaoyu part. Yes, and there's some titles over here, so um, 